Hello everyone! In this video I will give you further explanations of the dielectric and the magnetic field and what electricity is. So this will be kind of a part 2 of my previous video that was called Dielectricity, Magnetism and Electricity Explained. I will suggest you watch this video before so things will be more clear what I will explain here. And what you see here on the table is my high voltage impulse generator or high voltage transformer, whatever you want to call it. I have kind of simplified some things. It is still the exact same um, circuitry, but uh, instead of a lot of loose cables, I used fixed cables and soldered them together. And what you see here is still the same schematic for the circuit as used in my previous videos. And what I'm going to do now is show you a bit more how the magnetic and the dielectric field behaves when I power certain things and when I use an open circuit, meaning that I don't power anything with it. So first off, I will charge these capacitors. As you can see here, this is my high voltage output and this is my ground. And this is connected to a full bridge rectifier that charges these two capacitors. And now I will show you what, um, while it is charging, what will happen. And for this, you have to watch the amp readings on my power supply and also watch this compass that is sitting on my high voltage transformer. And watch what happens to the magnet that is in this compass and watch what happens to the amps that are in that are drawn from the power supply while it is charged. Because this is interesting. So now I will power it on and I will use 12 volts as input. And did you see what happened to the compass and to our amp readings? So let me discharge it. And then you will see it again. The compass will start to move and the amps, I will do it again, the amps go up. Now it is charging. And now it is fully charged and the amps go down again. And the voltage stays kind of the same. I do it again. See, it moves here. Because while it is charging, it is using power, meaning there is an amp draw and a magnetic field is generated in the system. Let me discharge it again. See it again. Okay, I think this was enough of a demonstration for now, for this setup. And, yeah, what you basically saw is what happens when I use power. And this is what electricity is. You know, probably you know Ohm's law. That means power is voltage times the amperes, which equals the watts. And while using power or charging these capacitors, we create a magnetic field. And this is why the magnet in this compass is moving. And I will give you an, another analogy. So maybe you can imagine better what I mean by this. If you imagine you have two water pipes and if you fill one up to here and the other one is filled up to here and you connect them together, there is a potential difference between these two water pipes. And this would be our voltage, this potential difference. And if you connect them together, they will want to seek equilibrium. So they want the, the potential difference wants to cancel out. So if you connect these two water pipes together, they will level 
up to the same level. And water will flow from the higher potential to the lower potential until they have the same potential. And this flow of water would be our current. And when, if you, if you say the water flow would be our current flow, while this flows, we have losses in the system because of resistance and therefore a magnetic field is generated. And this magnetic field is the loss in our system. This is the energy we consume or lose when we power our electric devices. I will show you another example here. <coughs> so for this, I disconnect this capacitors. Don't worry, I have discharged them before, so it's safe to touch. And here I have from an old power supply a coil that is wrapped around a ferrite core. And as you might know, this is the same principle as in every electromagnet. We have a coil wrapped around some ferrite or iron. And now I will connect um, this, let's say, electromagnet, what it basically is. And now I will power it and we will see what happens. So as you can see, we are using power here. See quite clearly the magnet moved because we create a magnetic field when we lose power or we use power. And also around here, you can clearly see this is an electromagnet because we have created a magnetic field around here. Also a dielectric field, but this is another topic for another video. So this is um, how, basically how an electromagnet works. So here we use power in our system. And therefore we create a magnetic field in this electromagnet. The same also goes for, if I turn it off again, you will see the magnetic field will disappear. If I power a lamp, like I've shown in my last videos, we also will create a magnetic field because we use power or, yeah, bit of a loose terminology, I know, but I hope you will get what I mean with it. So I will use a bit more input of around 20 volts. You see, this is our amps we are using. We are also creating a magnetic field here and here we have our light bulb, bulb lit up. And what you can see here is on the oscilloscope is just what my probe that is sitting around here not connected to anything is picking up. If I go closer to it the voltage rises of course but the voltage in this system is too high for my oscilloscope, so it is more than 4000 volts when no load is collected, connected. That is why I'm not connecting it, because I don't want to damage my oscilloscope. And now comes the part where I will show you what happens if I don't connect anything to my high voltage transformer, meaning I let this output, high voltage output and ground, unconnected to anything and we have an open circuit. And then it behaves quite differently. I will show you what I mean. So I will use yeah, 13 volts as input and you see we have no power draw or almost no power draw. These displays are not very accurate, they will fluctuate a bit, 
but it is basically zero current that we are using and as you can see the magnet does not move because we have no magnetic field around here it is just aligned with Earth's magnetic field and I don't know how well you can see this on the camera but my frequency that the device operates is now much higher it fluctuates very much because this system is not perfectly tuned and I also don't want to tune it perfectly right now and I will explain to you right now but first I will turn it off again because when we have an open circuit like this we create very strong dielectric impulses with no magnetic field component meaning we don't lose energy and we get extremely high voltage spikes or dielectric impulses and these dielectric impulses are also called scalar waves or like Nikola Tesla called it the death ray and he called it death ray for a reason because this is yeah kind of dangerous or de depending on the power input deadly for any human being or living organism and the reason why I turned it off right now is because you can actually feel this I am standing away like half a meter from it now so it's not that bad but if you put your head or your hand over it like this you can feel this very clearly and it depends of course of the input voltage but if I use input voltage of more than 10 volts you can feel it very clearly you will get a headache and feel really sick from it's hard to describe because you normally don't get this feeling anywhere you will feel really sick from the inside out and you will notice this notice this very quickly that something is wrong it's not like you get electrocuted but it will make you sick and if you use enough power I think it is literally a death ray so yeah if you're trying to replicate something like this or what I've shown here I will give you a big warning you will create these dielectric impulses or scalar waves or death rays if you don't connect the load to it and don't create a magnetic field because when you connect the load to it these dielectric impulses will also um, be not that high in voltage because of course you lose power and a magnetic field which is the loss um, will be introduced and the also in my system is the frequency I will just power something so you can see it better the frequency um, will be stabilized if I attach a load to it so let me power this one you can see I'm using like 25 volts and 0.15 amps to power this and we will create a magnetic field as you can see here and on the oscilloscope you see my frequency that I use to pulse this system is very stable and it stays at exact right now I'm using 37.7 kilohertz and it stays at this value if you put your hands over here you can really slightly feel the effects of it but this is not at this frequency this is not very harmful or bad for you and as far as I remember Nikola Tesla also stated there are also positive effects if you use the right frequencies and a well-tuned system so it doesn't always have to be bad for your health and if you use it like this there is I would say no problem with it but yeah if I disconnect my high voltage you see we lose the magnetic field and we create it insanely high I can feel it from here insanely high dielectric impulses and this is just not very pleasant and yeah I would call it dangerous because you don't see it but you will definitely feel it and yeah this is what 
I think has to be said about when using such devices because I haven't seen other people talk about this before. Maybe the devices don't create this high voltage impulses or dielectric impulses and therefore they don't have this problem. But yeah, as I showed the schematics I thought this would be important to know. And for the last experiment I show you in this video I will power up this lamp just for show. So Here I'm using the maximum what my power supply can supply to light up this. And this is a 23 watt um, fluorescent bulb, or not a bulb, a tube. And this is normally powered with 230 volts at 50 hertz. And if you power this with your house power at 230 volts, you cannot touch the 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 connections where it's connected to because you will get electrocuted of course and it will shock you extremely badly and it is very dangerous. But here um, I'm getting kind of the same brightness as it will as it if it would be powered with 230 volts but I can don't know if you can see it I can touch this very easily I'm touching both contacts the ground and the high voltage the light will slightly dim because I will ground some of the electricity but it's not hurting me at all. You can, if you have slightly wet fingers you can feel a bit of a tingle like it's the same as if you would connect, uh, if you touch a 9 volt battery with your tongue you can also feel it slightly but it is not even that intense. And so with setups like this, we could power our electronic devices, or I will say for this just lamps, much more efficient, meaning we're using, we're using less power. And it would be also much safer, because if you would touch um, a wire somewhere, it would not electrocute you or possibly kill you. Yeah. Um, I think this is all for this video I wanted to explain. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions what I could do with experiments, you can always ask. And yeah, that's it. Have a nice day and thanks for watching. Goodbye.